Hello, my name is Tony from NX Visual Studio, and in this tutorial we'll cover two parts. In part one, we will set up the particle simulator and the motion path for the camera. In part two, we will create a ring generation using the atomic particles to later attach to the particle simulator. So, it should look something like this. This tutorial is based on creating trap codes, particular uh, design within HitFilm using just a particle uh, simulator and uh, the atomic particles. Um, to get a better idea of this, I suggest you head over to YouTube and search Doctor Who Time Vortex uh, in After Effects tutorial, and he will give you some great ideas on how to generate fractal rings and um, just basically other ideas of how to make your vortex look and change the style. But in this uh, tutorial, we'll base it around. Uh, the atomic particles for now. Okay, so create a new composite shot. So, new composite shot. Name this composite shot main. And the duration 10 seconds. Uh, leave these uh, video properties as they are uh, on your computer because these are personally just mine. But go ahead and click create. In the visual effects panel, scroll down to particles and simulation and drag the uh, particle simulator onto the timeline. In your viewer, click on the top and drag the particle simulator further back into Z space. Uh, insert a new point. Make it 3D and place it where the particle simulator is. Uh, back into normal active camera view down the menu for the particle simulator, in the emitters, emitter, shape, attach there to layer and then attach it to the point. Ok, let's go down to the tra uh, trajectory and set random to cone and on the radius bring that down to zero and on the y axis on the rotation set this to 90 and that should point the particles directly toward the camera. Now let's head down into movement, so it's going to particle systems, particle system, and then in movement, bring the lifetime up to 60 seconds and the speed to 4000. Okay, so we shall start making some motion for this vortex. Um, so just double check and make sure that the particles are going to come directly toward the camera. Okay, brilliant. Uh, go up to your point and transform and we're going to set the keyframe for position move forward on the timeline until the particles hit the camera and then just enter and move forward about two seconds go into your viewer top and then move the point to the left hand side come forward another two seconds And then bring the point to the other side to the right. And then another two seconds. And then bring the point to the middle. Set these keyframes uh, interpolation to smooth. Highlight them all. Type them in the beginning, beginning one. Uh, and copy. Go to your second keyframe, move a few frames ahead and paste in the copy keyframes. Okay, so go ahead and duplicate this point and attach the camera, parent the camera to the point, uh, the second point we just duplicated. Move uh, forward ahead of your timeline from when the camera starts moving. And we can see the camera is not in motion with this trajectory. So grab your duplicated point and move it forward along the timeline until the camera becomes centered with the, uh, with the vortex. should follow the, the trajectory of the uh, particle simulator. There we go. Okay, so that's part one complete, so now we can move on to the reanimation. Okay, for the ring animation, so new layer, plane, name it ring, 
uh, width and height, 800 by 800. Aspect to square pixels, and the color is white. Create. Go ahead and place this into a new composite shot, and convert. New layer, point, convert to 3D. And in particles and simulation, pull down the atomic particles onto the ring, uh, ring plane. Pull down the menu for this and go into particle placement, position, transform, and from the point. Scroll down to twist, and then 500. And in your number of particles on the y axis, take 500 down to just one. And up to your point, transform and rotate on the y-axis to 90 degrees. Pull back on the camera until we can fit the whole thing inside. Unchain the scale and pull back to about 20. Down to the atomic particles onto fractal. Display strength and pull it up to about 200. And display strength about 40. And the iterations set that to 7. And the speed to 0 0.20. And under the flow properties, set x to 0 0.20, y to 0 0.10. And just play that back to yourself. Okay, new layer, grade. And we're going to set this to add on the blend mode. In your effects panel, type in blur. And we'll drop this down onto the ring plane. And back into the effects panel and type in caustics. And drag that underneath the blur. Pull down the menu for caustics and set the re refractive index to 4 and set the depth to 40. Back into the atomic particles now and we're going to go for particle appearance and zero off the random size and opacity random. The size brings this up to about 12. Okay, so the caustics is being used to create the vector blur effect and the blur is being used to interlink the particles to further assist the caustics with its height map. So we head down to the height map on the caustics and set this to 10 and back up to the atomic particles and we can decrease the wavelength to around about 10 and on disperse strength we can now decrease that to this will allow them to join and blend so bring this down to about 20. Okay, in new layer and place in a grade. And in your effects panel, type in gamma. Place it onto the new grade. And whatever color you want to have your vortex, just uh, have a little put around. This isn't specific, this part. Okay, now that's done, we can head back into main and close off the ring composite shot. Head into your particle simulator and scroll down to appearance. And in texture source, select layer and select your ring composite shot. And now that should start emitting our ring. So press play. And that's the easy part over. Okay, in the frame properties, change it from single to animated, highlight the frames, bring it back from the timeline to zero, keyframe the start frame, move two seconds ahead on the timeline, and set this to 280. Now, highlight the two uh, keyframes, copy, and move them two seconds ahead of themselves onto the timeline and paste. And repeat the process. Head back to the start of the timeline 
and in number of frames set this to 500 and hit the RAM preview. Okay, in the particle systems, bring down general and the particles per second bring us down to 10. Go back up into your canvas transform properties. And now we can keyframe the rotation to the correct motion path. So on the Y axis, at the beginning of the timeline, set a keyframe and move forward on the timeline to reach the point of turn. Place another keyframe on the Y axis. Move forward along the motion path and rotate to the correct motion path. And just keep repeating this process. Highlight all of the keyframes other than the beginning. Set the interpolation to smooth. Copy the keyframes. Back to your second keyframe and move a few frames ahead and paste in the keyframes. Okay, so the motion paths are set. In appearance, find color source and set to texture. This will take the color from the ring composite shot. Okay, so now new grade, so in new layer, new grade and caustics. Bring down the menu, set the depth to 30, refractive index to 4 and the height map to 5. Back into the particle simulator, set the blend mode to add, alpha boost to 5 and alpha to 0.1 and let's place on the motion blur for the alpha boost to take effect and in general for particles bring that up to 50 okay so now you have all of this set up this will enable you to produce vortexes similar to this If you don't want the vortex to animate, then simply remove the animation, the number of frames, so set this back to number one, and it then becomes a solid. You now have the tools to get creative, improve the detail by increasing the particle output, add different effects to your reanimation. It's now up to you to become creative. Okay, so we're going to go and do a time lapse now, and I'm going to do some alterations to further improve this vortex.
okay, so the time lapse should still give you a good idea of the alterations that I made. But in the end, make it your own. Play around, tweak it to your liking, add all sorts of crazy effects. So, that was my first tutorial. I hope this helps with your creativity in the future. This just goes to show how beautiful Hitform really is. So that's me saying goodbye, NX out. <laughs>